everybody, the first ever proper landing in our amphibian plane on water has been absolutely successful. Good, look at this. Now we're putting airliners that can land and take off both on land and water. Amphibian airliners, just like this one. This is actually a Soviet plane right here, the BE-200. Not actually that old of a plane right here. You can see it in the cockpit. Um, But a very, very unsuccessful plane. I've already made a video on it, right? As you can see, it's Soviet and it's a passenger plane indeed. Mostly these days used for firefighting. It's made by the um, Soviet company of Beriev. And well, it was a big, big failure. But I think, you know, just the plane design is super interesting. Or the concept of it, you know, being able to take off and land on, on water. I mean, isn't that a cool idea? So today I thought, let's make a little bit of a remake of that plane. You know, with a modern plane, like a 737. Can we turn the 737 into an amphibian airliner? Now, actually, I think this challenge won't be even that hard to make an airliner like this swim. I guess we can already, you know what, put it into water. Let's just leave land. And we can either do this smoothly by landing on water, or we can just spawn it onto water. That, let's just do that. Yes, there we go. Welcome aboard our 737, now in the water. As you can see, it actually does swim kind of well. Right, you know, these airliners mostly have, uh, like, sealable cabins, you know, for the pressurization up in the air, right? So that's mostly done waterproof, right? There's no way for water to get into the cabin unless you open the door probably right right now this is especially a thing on the a320 that i'm that i'm not going to be updating now actually because this plane does even have a ditching mode which you can find uh, actually right here under the pressurization panel right here it's called ditching and we have now practically turned this plane into a swimming boat which will float forever or something. And we probably all remember this case, for example, right here. The U.S. Airways Flight 1549, you know, with, with a solid landing, right? Where they landed an A320 in the Hudson. And, and the fun fact is that this A320 actually stayed afloat for two more days. Even with the doors having been opened and everything, right? And as you can see, even from that touchdown here on the water, the plane barely took damage. I think this is a very nice proof that, well, maybe even the normal airliners can um, operate on water. Maybe this is actually a very stupid idea. I mean, let's go back on, on part of the 737. Let me see if we can change something to make this actually work. Right, let's go and actually uh, spawn this plane onto the water again. What we can immediately tell is that um, we're gonna have some problems with the engines, right? This is not, this is, this is definitely not gonna work, right? Now, this is definitely the reason why the barrier, for example, has a, what we think is probably a rather weird design of the engines, right? They put them on top of the aeroplane, above the water, far away from the water. So we've got to find a way to put our engines on top. And this is actually where I can get back to a plane that I designed uh, probably a year back when I was talking about weird planes. Welcome everybody on board the 737, but its parents were cousins. That's what I would call it now. Yes. Everybody, the engines are on top of the wings. I mean, okay, it's probably fairly obvious, which is actually, you know, this could actually kind of work. Let me try to get into the cockpit right here and just try to take off and maybe do a full flight, well, into the water. Let's go. All right, so welcome now aboard our flying 737, but his parents were cousins. Let me try to land on the water now. Now, I'm not quite sure. Of course, there's a difference between landing on, for example, a lake and, oh my God, and some, like, sea, right? You know, with the waves and stuff. I don't know about that. You know, for example, Sully landed on rather still water, you know, with the River of Hudson, which is definitely a difference. But let's maybe try to land here, right? All right, let's put the flaps out. It's very important when you're landing on water to land as slowly as, well, the, you know, aerodynamics of the plane allow. So let's maybe just get as slow as possible. How about that? All right, let's already put the landing gear. Ah, never mind. We won't need the landing gear today. I've just noticed. There we go. Okay. Come on down. Let's maybe like, try to land smoothly here. Yeah! Oh my god! That was one of my smoothest landings I've ever done! Let's go ahead and now stop quickly here, using the reverse thrust of our engines, which are again hanging above water. This is kind of working, and this is kind of ridiculous. And we're actually kind of a, we're floating. We are afloat, literally. We have literally landed our plane here in the sea. Um, and it works. 
and stuff. Yeah, so what can we do with this now? We're actually still even. Everything is working quite well. We have the cockpit is a little bit broken now, but that's another story. Right, maybe try to uh, actually leave the plane as well. The thing is, we're not sinking at all. I just wanted to mention that. Maybe if you were to design a plane that, you know, again, is fully sealed from the outside, which is something that, again, most planes can do anyway, we will be perfectly staying afloat, and actually, we can probably take off again. Right, let's do that. So passengers uh, now step back in. You know what, the disembarkment, like the, the boarding of the passengers and the deboarding of the passengers is something that you might want to think about. Anyway, how do I close that? It doesn't matter. Let's not close that door. Now, definitely what's going to be a little bit interesting is definitely steering on the water. I don't have any, I've never flown a real seaplane, so I don't really know how to steer it. So this is uh, going to be interesting. I guess if you have a dual engine plane, you can just use your differential thrust that you have. There we go. Oh, that actually does the job quite well. There we go. Giving him full power into the left engine. There we go. Nice drift. All right, a little bit too much drift. All right, let's go full power and try to take off again. Ah, uh, too much drift. Too much. We are not getting out of it. All right, there we go now. Let's go full power here. This is kind of working well. This is, this is looking kind of good. Right. Actually, I like how stable this plane sits in the water. Of course, this is not the most accurate physics representation. I would probably, you know, build some skids here uh, below the wings. There we go. Anyway, let's try to take off here. And I guess this is where we can run into a bit of a problem, isn't it? Come on. Try to reach more speed. Yeah. I guess we apparently need a lot of power here to get a plane like this taken off the water here. Of course, water has a lot more resistance to it than air does. We're not really taking off, are we? Okay. So what that means is... We need a, we need stronger engines, all right. All right, so let's hop onto the X-Plane Plane Maker and Maker Plane. For that one, we have to go to the engine specs. This is a very, very ugly software, by the way. Now here we can actually change the engine specs. We can make the allowable thrust more. All right, there we go. This is gonna go very well. But let's go ahead and spawn out onto a proper seaplane airport, right? So let me try some place in Britain right here. It's called Loch Lomond. There we go. Let's go. All right. So welcome to Loch Loch whatever Loch thing ding dong. We are right now here in the north of England in Scotland. Very beautiful. Very much near. I think that's what is that? Glasgow. Whatever. We are here, and the thing is, this is a little bit challenging now since we're of course we're on a lake, everybody. So let's go ahead now and align ourselves properly here on this lake and let's just maybe try to take out this plane here we go full power into the end and we can hear that oh my god all right i might have made it a little bit too powerful uh all right that <laughs> i mean that worked though yeah all right so welcome to the lock again let me try this properly now now it's time for the proper you know realistic approach here we go let's go full power into the engines looking good now this would right now probably have the power of like the ge90 engine of the triple seven which would be probably a little bit bigger pretty much as big as the 737 fuselage but we know we need that power here we go 80 knots looking good 90 knots all right we're coming up with a clock right here 100 knots looking good yes yes it's already pulled the nose up looking good 140 knots perfect Yes, everybody, we have taken off our beautiful 737. This is actually kind of, this has actually worked pretty well as well. I mean, yeah, you know, we would never really have engines of this caliber. But anyway, this is probably nice. We have a golf course down here. Now, let's me try again uh, coming in for a landing right here at Lock something like that. I don't know what it's called. Right. We will probably not use much of runway because we have pretty strong reverse thrust power now, which is something very important. Of course, it's not very easy to break on water as it is on land. So, let's maybe try to get this going. How fast is our stopping distance now? Good. We've got this nice lake in front of us. It's coming for a bit of a landing in our amphibian plane. Let me try to do this as smoothly as before. Alright, oh, oh, that's actually been a hard landing. But of course, those happen as well. <clears throat> and stuff. Let's go ahead and stop. That literally took not long. Oh, I'm got, oh my god, alright. Good! Yes, everybody, the first ever proper landing in our amphibian plane on water has been absolutely successful. Good, look at this. I mean, it's been a little bit hard, but there we go. As you can see, the plane actually swims very well with a very, very strong reverse thrust. You know, this has been not been a problem at all, the stopping. Good, and we're actually kind of stable on the water. So, yes, what have we learned? Planes can actually swim somewhat well. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. 
Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Mike, Jacob, Tanner, Mubarak, Darren K, Oh Man, The Human, Robbie, Tim, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Calvin, Kelly Chaos, Ryland, Moritz, Jackie Boy, New the York, Shadow, Noah, and Death Rider.